Barely 10 miles off the Caribbean coast of South America lies the island of Trinidad. The Arawak Indians who lived here before Columbus discovered the island called it Airi, which means land of the hummingbird. Internationally acclaimed as the birthplace of Calypso and the Steel Band, Trinidad has another, if not so well known, claim to fame. For on this tiny island, comprising less than 1,800 square miles, can be found a concentration of plant and animal life so colorful and varied that it offers the naturalist a veritable feast of delights. The closeness of Trinidad to the Venezuelan mainland and the many different habitats accounts for its enormously rich fauna. Over 100 mammals have been recorded here, nearly 100 reptiles and amphibians, and more than 600 butterflies. Its tally in excess of 400 birds is more than twice as great as that for the whole of Canada. The northern range rises to some 3,000 feet. Much of it is heavily forested. Towards the middle of the range is situated the Azarite Nature Center. The center was established in 1967 by the late Azarite, proprietor of the Spring Hill Estate, a plantation producing cocoa, coffee, and citrus. Aza Wright, who was an Icelandic national, often played host at Spring Hill to visiting research biologists, many of whom became her friends. It was with their help and encouragement that a trust was formed to administer the estate as a wildlife study center. Much wildlife can be seen without ever leaving the buildings. The center is particularly renowned for its bird life. Nearly 200 species have been recorded here. A frequent visitor to the feeders is the white-lined tanager. The rufous brown of the female contrasts sharply with the glossy black plumage of her mate. Also common is the great keskadee. the white-chested emerald, the grayish saltator, and the yellow oriole. An unexpected and ungracious guest is this crested oropendola who robs the feeder. These are silver-beaked tanagers, so-called because of the male's prominent lower mandible. Here, the female silverbeak feeds her chick. As with most birds of the rainforest, clutches are small, and usually no more than one chick survives to fledge. This is the bare-eyed or golden-eyed thrush. Normally feeding on the nectar of flowers, these purple honey creepers find the sugar solution much to their liking. The green honey creeper is more like a tanager than a honey creeper in build. Female honey creepers are characteristically less brightly colored than the males. This dowdy specimen is a female purple honey creeper. 
a curved beak and long tongue are specially adapted for feeding on nectar and soft fruit. Other common tanagers are the blue-gray, and the palm tanager. The bay-headed tanager is, by contrast, a less common visitor to the feeder, usually preferring to remain in the forest. The nature center has long been a favorite location of wildlife artists, particularly those specializing in the painting of birds. Edward Rooks, the resident naturalist, is also a well-known local artist and has been producing paintings of the island's wildlife for many years. As an experienced guide, he conducts visitors on nature tours through the lush and verdant rainforest that surrounds the center. Here is a pair of orange-winged parrots. Also known as the common Amazon parrot, the species is extremely prolific and is classified as a pest because of its reputation for attacking cocoa plantations. Below the forest canopy, obscured from the sun, are found understory plants, such as this heliconia, known locally as the balisier. Forest trees yield a variety of fruit. The berries of this wild tobacco bush are an important source of food for the birds. In the thin rainforest soil, many trees have developed buttressed and stilt roots for support. Others carry an array of fierce, stout thorns on their trunks for protection of the bark. A large proportion of the world's insect species occurs in the tropical rainforest. This bush cricket resembles the lichen on the bark of a tree to disguise itself from likely predators. Similarly, Pycnopalpa, another cricket, mimics a leaf complete with imitation fungus spots. The harlequin beetle is more conspicuous, but its size and spiny armor offer a sufficient deterrent. Purely fortuitously, the pattern on this butterfly's wings resembles an eight and a nine, hence its name, the 89 butterfly. The nest of the yellow oriole is a stout bag of woven grass with its entrance at the top. Its close relative, the crested oropendola, locally known as the yellowtail, builds a similar but much longer nest, reaching up to five feet in length. Oropendolas nest in colonies comprising as many as 40 nests. These birds are polygamous and mate indiscriminately. Normally, there is one dominant male in the colony and several subordinate males. Only the female feeds the chicks. The 
males are incurable shorts and spend much of their time in noisy courtship display. This snake is the harmless rainbow boa. <laughs> and this popping snake, in spite of its fierce appearance, is also harmless. In fact, only four of the 40 or so species of snakes found in Trinidad are venomous, and these are rarely encountered. strange crackling noise is caused by wing snapping and emanates from the display ground of the white bearded mannequin where the males gather for their ritual courtship dancing. Each male clears a small patch of ground known as a court. Here it conducts its dance. Great pains are taken to ensure the courts are kept clear of debris. There may be as many as 70 males dancing in a single display ground, each with its separate court. Their dance comprises a series of frenzied leaps from one perch to another, with loud snapping and fanning of wings. Display grounds remain in use for many years, and the male bird may spend as much as 90% of its waking hours displaying in the hope of attracting a female. Much more difficult to find is the bearded bellbird. The blue-crowned motmot, in contrast with the fruit-eating mannequin and bellbird, feeds on large invertebrates including centipedes and scorpions, small reptiles, and even other birds. The channel-billed toucan is a common forest dweller. During courtship, the male delicately feeds the female berries from its enormous beak as an enticement for her to mate. a rare glimpse of the rufous-tailed jacamar. This bird is sometimes known as the king hummingbird because of its iridescent plumage, but is no relation. A copper-rumped hummingbird brings food to its single chick. In the constant damp atmosphere of the rainforest, epiphytes, such as bromeliads and orchids, thrive. 
taking their nourishment direct from the moist air. This is the lambstail orchid, Epidendrum moyibambi. The fragrant orchid, Epidendrum fragrans, and the butterfly orchid, Oncidium papilio. The jumping wabine is not confined to any one stream, but launches itself overland from pool to pool. The rain adds vigor to the chorus of Colostephus, this tiny frog that lives by the banks of rivers. Lineated woodpeckers forages for grubs. Other birds dry their plumage in the sun. A long trek through the forest has led our party of naturalists to Dunstan's cave, where there is a colony of oil birds. What time is lunch? <laughs> Locally known as the guacharo, the oil bird is an unusual species, roosting in the dark of caves during the day and emerging only at night to feed on fruit which is swallowed whole. After the soft pulp of the fruit has been digested, the seeds are regurgitated. A forest of young seedlings springs from the floor of the cave, only to die for lack of light. There are only eight breeding colonies of oil birds known in Trinidad. As the day draws to a close, the party of naturalists returns to the center. Traditional rum punch is served before dinner and the opportunity taken to discuss the sightings of the day. The standard work of reference is A Guide to the Birds of Trinidad and Tobago by Richard French. Many of the plates in the book were drawn from life here at the center. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 
A gecko, in search of moths attracted to the light, puts in an appearance. Outside, the creatures of the night emerge. This giant planarium is nearly six inches long. Tree porcupine climbs through the forest canopy with the aid of its prehensile tail. This is Peripetos, a rare zoological curiosity. It has features of both insects and worms, but belongs to neither of these two groups. An illuminated sheet attracts an enormous variety of flying insects for study by these entomologists. They won't stay there forever. I think that's all right. All around them is the nocturnal chorus, produced by a myriad of insects and frogs. The rain earlier in the day has triggered the breeding of these phylomedusa, a type of green tree frog. Several males clamber aboard the only available female in a determined attempt to mate with her. Dawn brings out an armadillo foraging for roots and grubs in the cool of early morning. and a herd of timid brocket deer moves nervously through the awakening forest. The Azarite Nature Center is concerned with the preservation of the environment and the conservation of wildlife, not only within its own boundaries, but throughout the whole of Trinidad. As the dawn chorus heralds the beginning of a new day, a pall of smoke rises from a forest clearing. The practice of slash and burn methods to clear land for agriculture has resulted in the destruction of many acres of forest. Several endangered species, like the giant leatherback turtles, under threat from poachers, have attracted the particular attention of conservationists. This is the only known film of the extremely rare Trinidad piping guan, locally known as the Pawi. It is found nowhere else in the world. It has been hunted almost to the point of extinction. The magnificent scarlet ibis, national bird of Trinidad, is in danger too. But an awareness is growing among the people of the island of the enormous richness of their natural heritage and the vital necessity for conservation. It is an awareness which says, 
This is yours to share with the world. It is precious. Cherish it. The producers acknowledge with gratitude the contributions received from the following firms and organizations. Without their assistance, the making of this film would not have been possible. The Arthur Wright Nature Center, management and staff. The House of Angostura. The National Commercial Bank of Trinidad and Tobago. The Caribbean Development Company Limited. Neil and Massey Group of Companies. BWIA International, J.N. Harriman and Company Limited, Imgen Security Services Limited, Sings Auto Rental Company Limited, British Airways, West Indian Tobacco Company Limited, Lever Brothers West Indies Limited. <laughs>